What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today we're going to discuss a real life problem I encountered on an IoT pen test. We have recreated this problem in a synthetic way and we're going to show off the problem I encountered, the errors I saw, and how I eventually overcame this problem of modifying a JFFS2 file system in certain contexts and trying to reinstall that onto a real IoT device. So let's go over to my screen and show you this made up firmware file that I have created to recreate the same problem that I saw. So here we have this firmware.bin file. We can run binwalk on it and check out its contents. We have a squashfs file system. That's typically what you'll see for like a root file system. And then if you want to modify a writable file system, that might be a JFS2 file system. So we're not gonna worry about the squashfs. We want to make a modification, repackage this JFFS2 file system here. So to extract the contents out, we will throw the dash E flag onto our binwalk command, and then we will see that we have this underscore and then our file name. So we have this directory, and we can see that it has successfully created two directories for us that contain the unpackaged squashfs, we're going to leave that alone, and that second file system, the JFFS2 file system. Let's go ahead and just run our tree command. We can see that there's, you know, a bunch of random text files and a bunch of images. I just need to get some uh, amount of data into that image to make it interesting. And so that is what we have. And then for our firmware modification that we are going to simulate today, we can just echo uh, you know, Matt was here into that, that directory, and then we'll call this, you know, pwned.txt, right? Just saying. So we now have this directory with our modification to it. And so we want to repackage this now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the makefs j I gotta learn to type jffs2 command. And then there's going to be two parameters that we're gonna use on this command. So first the dash D parameter, and this is where we're gonna specify a directory that has all the data that we wanna make a file system out of. So that's that file system right there that we extracted and modified. And then the other option is gonna be the dash O flag, and this is just going to output a binary blob that is the result of creating this file system. So we'll call this mod, we'll just name it that, uh, jffs2, we'll label it nicely. And so now we can see, we can run the file command on, on our new file system. It identifies itself as a jffs2 file system, a little endian, all that good stuff. So. Now what we want to do is we want to see if we can mount this. So to simulate the situation that I encountered, we're going to use a couple of kernel modules. And the first one, I'm going to copy this command, is right here. So we're going to run this MTD RAM uh, to create this uh, mock memory device, a mock flash device inside of Linux. and we are going to, the total size is, that's bigger than the firmware file that we have, that's fine. But this erase size, this is gonna be the important part right here. So we're setting this erase size equal to four. Now, these parameters for this uh, MTD RAM kernel module, uh, these parameters, uh, the erase size parameter is specified in kilobytes. So when we specify four, it's actually four kilobytes or 4,096 bytes. So we're going to run that command and there's another command we're going to run this MTD block kernel module. So we will instantiate both of those. And now what's really interesting is now this is going to act just as if there was a like a flash chip on an embedded device. And so what you can do is if you have a shell on an embedded device, 
you can actually go and you can actually check that, uh, that erase block size, which uh, we'll, we'll talk about what that is later, but it's just interesting that we can go and we can go to proc MTD, and it will tell us a little bit about this MTD zero device that it has created. And so uh, here's the size, and here's that erase block size, which is important, but we'll get back to it later. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to copy our modified JFS2 file system. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go sudo dd in file, specify that modified firmware file. Out file is going to be dev mtd block zero. And so that's going to copy it into this you know, mock flash device. And now we're going to attempt to mount this. So we can just create a directory that we want to mount this file system onto. And we're going to run the following command here. So we're, we're running mount, we're specifying the type, of, the type of file system that it is, and then we're specifying that path to the MTD block is your device, and then we're saying we want to mount it onto the directory mount. So we do that. And we have some errors. And this is what I encountered when I was in a real live IoT pen test. I thought that I had successfully modified the firmware, repackaged it up, flashed it onto a flash chip, and put it back onto a device. And these are some of the errors that I received. So now, one thing to notice is that there are still some files here, but what you would probably notice is that if you tried to read all the contents byte for byte, there would be some errors in these, especially in these image files, these larger files here. And you can see we're getting all these warnings and stuff like that. And then there's some really important errors right here that we want to look at. And this was the clue that eventually led me down a rabbit trail to figure out what was wrong. So. Here we can see, you know, node at something address with a length of something would run over the end of the erase block. And then the second error says, perhaps the file system was created with the wrong erase size. Uh, or that could be translated the wrong erase block size. So then this led me down a rabbit trail of like, OK, well, do I need to figure out the exactly correct erase block size of the device that I had over here at, at the desk, which, by the way, I did not have a root shell on. And I couldn't run, you know, I couldn't cat proc MTD on this device at the moment. So this led me to a really uh, interesting and <laughs> very random post that is from when I was a kid, uh, way back in the days of the internet. And this is a person who is a kernel developer just kind of describing this file system type and what the meaning of this erase block size is. So I'm going to read some of this. Try to stick, stick with me on this, because this is really significant for how we have to solve this problem. So it says, unlike you know, the old file system, JFS2 treats each erase block of flash separately. It never writes nodes, parts pieces of the file system, which cross over from one erase block to another and will not cope, it'll have issues, if it encounters a file system with such nodes. Okay, Any node which crosses an erase block boundary will be ignored, and then it will have, the file system will be corrupted. And then down here, the last, the last paragraph was what really led me in the direction of like how to fix the problem. So that, that states the problem. OK, we're going to corrupt our file system, but how, do, how can we fix this? Do I have to know the exact erase block size? Which may, maybe that would be helpful. But it says here that, OK, there's some default here in this command, this, the, this command that we used. So we use this command to make that JFS2 file system and attempt to get it to run on our, our fake IoT device that we have simulated here on our, on our computer. So the default erase block size is 64K. All right. 
And it says, because that's the smallest race block size you're likely to encounter. Well, I, you know, hit the edge case, obviously, in this case. And it said, creating an image with a smaller erase block size than the actual hardware is harmless. This was the key for me. So if you create a file system that has a larger erase, erase block size than your target hardware, that's going to cause problems. But if it's smaller, you're fine. So I'm like, OK, well, how small can I make it? Let's, let's look into that. OK, so let's pop over here on the shell. And let's just go find our command again that we used to produce. Here, let's go history, grep, for make fs. All right, so here we go. Um, you can see some of my previous commands running this, messing around with this. So here we can see that uh, here, here's, here's that command we, we ran to generate our mod.jffs2. So we can pass in values to specify the erase block size. So like we read in that, uh, that post there, the default value is 64k. So Let's try something, you know, let's try something smaller, like, I don't know, I'm just going to make up a number here. Let's, go, let's say 5,000. It'll say, it'll, get, it'll come back with this, with this like, warning. It, it still creates the file system for me. It says race block size is too small, increasing it to 8K. Now, that's interesting, because you'll notice that uh, this is kind of the spoiler alert here, is that my hardware that I was targeting had an erase block size of only four kilobytes. And so this tool, as it stands right now, will not create a file system that will work for me, because it will always create, it, the minimum is 8K. It's like a hard-coded minimum in this tool. And so what I had to do to successfully repackage this firmware is I had to modify this open source tool. So what we're gonna do, we're going to go grab the source code to MTD Utils, which uh, provides a ton of different binaries for doing stuff with uh, file systems, and it can, it also will produce the binary that we care about. So let's go ahead and we'll just clone it right here. Let's go into that directory, and we're going to find that line here increasing to you know too small increasing to obviously we don't want to cop we don't want to search for that stuff because you know so let's let's just look recursively grep through this source code and we will find something right here in this in this tool for makefs jfs2.c okay that's pretty promising let's grab that and let's Go edit that file, and then let's try to search for, uh, oh man, too small. I forgot what we were even searching for. Aha. Uh -huh. Got to have it capitalized correctly. All right, let's search for that in Vim. And see here in the source code that it has this if check. It says if the erase block size is less than uh, 2,000 in hex, which is 8K, then it's just going to set it to 8K, right? So uh, there's lots of ways we could change this in the logic, obviously, but right now what we're gonna do is we're just going to say, hey, uh, we're, gonna we're going to ch change it so that our new minimum is the value that we want to set it to. Like we could, we could just like, you know, nuke this block of code too, but this seems like a pretty easy way for us to get what we want out of this tool. So now we're going to compile everything. We're going to, aha, I forgot we have to run this like auto gen thing. Cool. Now we can run the configure script. Awesome. And now we can run our compiler to compile. It's going to compile every program here. And you'll see there's like now a million binaries in here. But the only one that we really care about is this one. So just to make this convenient, we're just going to go back a directory, copy that in. And now we're going to go to history, make fs. We're going to find that command that we just ran here. 
and we're going to make sure we run the local copy of this new program. And for our erase block size, we're going to set it to 4096, which again, we found from the proc MTD, and uh, because we, we, we knew it ahead of time that that is the target erase block size that we want to set on uh, the file system that we're creating. So, so we run that, we have this new image here, and so now we can simulate what this would be like actually booting up on target hardware that has that smaller erase block size. So we're going to run our dd command again, sudo dd in file. It's going to be that mod. And then we're going to say out file is dev mtd block zero. OK, I just realized it might really not like the fact that I modified that while it was mounted. So we're just going to make sure we uh, run that dd command again. And now the moment of truth is we go sudo mount tjfs2. We're going to do dev mtd block onto mount. And you'll notice that this time we didn't get any errors. OK, just to prove it again. So you have d message like this. And all we get is this other warning, which uh, we, I, I, I got every time. But we don't get those big scrolling errors, uh, problems with nodes going over, going over the boundary. And that is what allowed me in, again, a real world IoT pen test. You, you got to think on your feet sometimes. I had to modify this tool. I was able to successfully modify the firmware and get it back onto a real target device. So. Uh, this is just a quick little tip on modifying firmware. This is an edge case, but I hope that you see that this is not a mechanical process, these IoT pen tests. You really do have to uh, be creative sometimes and come up with a unique solution to the problems that you face along the way. Please uh, continue to like, comment, and subscribe to these videos. It really helps me down in the comments to know what kind of videos you like, what you don't like, what new content you'd like me to look at in the future. That's all I have for you. Have a great day.